Hey guys, welcome, welcome to you know what I call the greatest show on earth where we talk about all things backpacking, hiking, camping. I start off with the headphones usually just because I want to make sure that everything is in sync and it, of course it sounds like it's good like it does every week. I'm not sure why I bother checking, but you never know. But if you're watching this on the replay and you think to yourself, man, these guys are having a ton of fun in the chat and you wish that you could be here with us live. The best way to do that is make sure that you subscribe down below and also you have to click that notification bell. That's how all these guys in the chat know when I'm going live. And usually I plan about five minutes kind of buffer time for you guys to kind of get in the chat and get talking and get going. And it's one of those things that really is a good time when we do that. So that's one of the ways we can do that, as well as if you follow me on Twitter, I didn't put it on Twitter this time, if you follow me on Facebook, I make sure I put a post the morning before, or I did earlier this afternoon, we'll let you know that I'm going live, and that we're going to talk about what we're going to talk about. So, Trevor Dixon talking about the Highlands, yeah, the, so we just came back, uh, a group of us, four of us or so, came back from the Laurel Highlands hiking trail, and it was awesome, I, I had a really good time, it was a really good trip. One of the things that surprised me hey last grand open woods made the live stream one thing that surprised me and i told the guys when i was there is that i was surprised when i first looked at the elevation gain and the elevation profile i thought to myself that is nothing like you, you definitely saw um when you started if you started from ohio pile how steep that went and at the end of course there's another steep drop off i'm like okay other than that it's fairly flat right and no, <laughs> it kind of reminded me, I told Subaru Josh, it reminded me a lot of uh, the Hannah Mountain Trail and the Smoky Mountains, where it's a ton, I mean, that was a long trail, the Hannah Mountain Trail and the Smokies, and it's a lot of ridge walking. And so ele elevation profile wise, it may look overall fairly flat, you're not getting a whole lot, but there's a lot of up and down. And so you went over one hill, and then you're like, oh, I got over this hill, and then you go flat for a little while, you come down, and then you're like, oh, there's another hill. And so that was something that really um, surprised me, honestly. I don't know why, because I know Pennsylvania is hilly in general, but it's one of those things where when you see the elevation profile, you have an expectation. And I've seen Jason's videos of the Laurel Highlands Hiking Trail, and I think to myself, it should be fairly flat, right? And it's not overall. We'll come back to it. So questions in the chat, talking about staying warm in the LHHT. Yes, the first night was was cold. I definitely had some cold moments, but I stayed in the shelter two two of the nights and stayed in the hammock uh, the middle night. Um, and so we had blazing fires. It was awesome. You guys are going to see the video, and there should be three videos, three different perspectives coming out of this. But Laura Highlands Hiking Trail, their overall system and shelter system does such a good job. Like I think it's like the perfect place to winter backpack, especially if you're like me, kind of getting started winter backpacking. Um, that's one of those things that just it it made sense. The whole shelter system made sense, and the fireplaces and gathering wood that was just perfect for that. So completely warm. Uh, hey Jason, the Outdoor Adventures made it in. Um, let's see. Someone asked him about the Mountain House dinner, the turkey dinner. Oh my gosh, Rotor Medic Vance. Um, you probably follow me on Instagram, maybe knowing that Mountain House turkey dinner. Phenomenal, absolutely phenomenal. It reminded me of Thanksgiving dinner, and so it reminded me of just stuffing and gravy and turkey all mixed together. And so that's um, that's out now. Um, if you go to the website, you'll see it. They aren't promoting it. So you guys may, if you get in now, you'll get in before it gets sold out. Um, and you guys know I'm a Mountain House Ambassador. And if, I, I've been mentioning this to a couple people who have been going on the AT or doing long hikes. Usually they're not aware that I have a 30% off code because I'm an, I'm an ambassador. And so if you use that, you get 30% off whatever it is that you're purchasing. Um, of course, if you purchase a lot, then it makes more sense because you're going to save on shipping. Um, but that code is in the description if you'd like it. So Mountain House Turkey Casserole Dinner was perfect. Really, really good. Uh, yeah, Hilly and Rocky. That was one of the things I noticed as well, Jason. Um, I, knew, I know Pennsylvania is known for its rocks. And I've been on some really rocky trails uh, in the Smokies. But that Pennsylvania Trail was definitely like a new level. Um, those... You know, those small, loose rocks where I, there was one time, and I won't give too many spoilers, um, is that one time where I just make sure that, I, you know, I, I had my trekking pole and I really twinged my knee pretty badly. It was my left knee. It was kind of giving me some trouble on downhills, but I really tweaked it. It's one of those small rocks and just kind of shifted under me and it, it just kind of 
went. I just had to slow down. Those guys were up ahead. I had to slow down for a little while. I ended up being fine, um, but um, that's one thing that I did not expect. Hey, Jonathan. Let's see. Long hikes. It would put me to sleep. What are we talking about here? <laughs> uh, yeah, I tried my best to multitask, so I have a, an idea in mind of what I'm going to do and what we're going to talk about in terms of backpacking, but I always look back at the comments, so... Uh, Rotor Medic Man says Amazon is sold out. The Mountain House website, I'm sure, has it. That's where the 30% off code is. Um, so that's where I would check. PA rocks, yeah. Hey, everyone. Oh, the turkey would make you fall asleep. Yeah, that's possible. Um, hey, Jonathan. Hey to all you guys who are watching. Uh, yeah, the, the turkey was actually not too bad. And, and how I kind of do my overall meals is I kind of have... And the guys who are with me recognize is I usually do a bar uh, or two in the morning. That kind of gives me energy. I have snacks uh, mid-morning. I kind of have a quick lunch so that I can actually eat lunch on the move if I need to. All the other guys I was uh, with, so Jason, Meerkat, and Gary, they all kind of stopped for hot lunches, which was unusual to me because I, I usually don't take a hot lunch. We usually take a break. And unfortunately, with winter time, you really can't sit down because everything is covered in snow. At least it was the first day we were there. And so it's something that we were, uh, were actually not, um, I guess I had not anticipated. When we first came there, I was fully anticipating that we weren't going to have much snow, and it turns out that we did. So that was great. Uh, Trevor, hit any more trails in PA this year? I plan on doing the West Rim Trail the first week in April. It's funny you mentioned that, Trevor. Um, the hope is maybe just to have uh, an overnight at some point in PA, not... Not much of a hike, it's more of a, a camp and kind of get an overnight. And that might be in Pennsylvania, um, since you guys, honestly, your state park system is phenomenal. I just can't believe that all that stuff is kind of paid for um, by your by your permits and all that, um, that, you know, the wood was taken care of, the shelter was taken care of, and so it's awesome. Hey, Jeff. Uh, Turkey Tetrazzini is one of my favorite mountain houses. I have, I have not tried that one. I think the day of hiking would make you fall asleep. Tim, when is your next big hike? Depends how you define big. If you're thinking about it in terms of mile, I mean, the guys who are with me uh, recognize that we were talking about it. I'm not a big mile pusher. So if you're talking miles, I usually like somewhere between, if we're talking about four to five days, um, you know, I, I try to go 10, 15 miles a day. That's usually comfortable for me. I like that. And it's more relaxing for me. If you're talking big in terms of views, there may be a, um, there's definitely going to be a hike in the Smokies in June. Uh, that one may be more of a family one, so that's not really considered to be big. But July, so once every year, we try to have a, a big or epic hike. So this year's big or epic hike was, um, I consider to be the Maroon Bells. And so that was awesome. Next year's hike, the hope is Utah. Um, we'll see what happens. Um, right now, I'm keeping an eye. I have a, a Google alert set for flights so we can see uh, what the Utah uh, pricing is going to be from uh, Ohio to Salt Lake City. But the plan is to hit up the high point in Utah, and there should be another YouTuber on that trip. Should be a kind of a fun one. Um, but it's all tentative right now. We Nothing is set until we actually book the flights. So that's kind of my next big one that I can think of. Um, Smokies, I'll hit up, of course. Red River Gorge is the plan, um, and a couple overnights here and there. But yeah, this was this is probably the biggest one I've had for a while since everyone was sick. Uh, we were supposed to go in the Smokies in September, no, in uh, October, and we did not. Um, but this time around, we made sure that we um, this was our big hike. I was able to put a couple hikes together and go out for four days, and so that was kind of fun. We got to do that. West Rim Trail. What underquilt did you use on your trip last week with the cold weather? I do not use an underquilt, <laughs> even the cold weather. And so Stricky is asking about what I, what I use in my hammock underquilt wise. And the answer is no underquilt. I always use a pad. And so I just actually sold my underquilt, I want to say a year ago now, maybe six months ago. And I use the Xtherm um, kind of year, year round. Um, that allows me in the summer months what I can actually do is not have a top quilt at all or just a very light one just have the x-therm and that has kept me perfectly warm and so the low i think on that second night got down to 31 according to jason's uh thermometer uh, and i was perfectly comfortable i was actually uh too hot at one point and that's just with a sleeping bag in the hammock and i had it uh, as a quilt and the x-therm perfectly warm 
Let me know about the Smokies. I could do that one with you. I'll let you know, Scott, as it comes closer. Looking at Denali backcountry this August. That's going to be a bucket list trip. Oh, that'd be kind of fun. Adirondacks. As a mountain house ambassador, I really need to push... <laughs> this is restless. I really need you to push them to make a Salisbury steak with fries and brown gate. Oh, that sounds really good. Seriously, send me an email. It doesn't hurt. I always email those guys who uh, run the ambassador program with ideas and comments and so who knows maybe we'll get someone in the food section and they'll really think about it so email me honestly uh adam to remind me hey tom I'm glad you can make it is google alerts the best way this is crazy kev to save money on airfare i think so um so what i use is kind of the google flight system and they base it off of uh what's the thing i think it's ita matrix it used to be kind of the old the old way of making sure that um, you weren't getting ripped off for flights, but Google Flights kind of uses that base system. And so I set up an alert. So if uh, flights go up or down, depending on specific ones that I choose, it lets me know right away. And so I can choose at that point whether to buy it or not. Um, so I usually, um, those alerts are set up through the, I, I've had really good success finding cheap flights using that system. Of course, I also check the budget airlines. Uh, Southwest is a big one as well as Frontier in my area. And for me, you can get some really cheap flights to backpacking destinations if you check those out. Uh, outdoors is asking about the RAB. The RAB worked out perfectly. Uh, I'm actually glad I brought it just for that first uh, night. You guys probably saw in Jason's live stream. The second night, I didn't really need it. Uh, I needed a down jacket of some kind because the second night, like we said, was a low of 31 and I was perfectly comfortable. I would have been comfortable in a uh, uh, my Ghost Whisperer. Uh, but for that first night, it was very nice to have the Reb. Um, if anything, the extra bit of weight I thought was worth it. Once you start dipping into the 20s, um, the Ghost Whisper for me does not cut it. You can maybe push it with some layering and a vapor barrier. Uh, but for me, the Reb was just absolutely perfect for that. And there's some pressure in the chat for Gary to start a channel. We must have talked about that, I don't know how many times, about getting Gary, um, who's in the chat, give him a big thumbs up, because he's uh, starting the AT here in, let's see, tomorrow's February 1st. So starting tomorrow will be the month that Gary is starting the AT. And so let him know in the, the chat, you know, your comments, support, of course, for him. Um, but let him know that you'd love him to vlog. Right now, he just has an Instagram. He has his channel set up. But all he has to do is upload videos and get it done, Gary. Because it'll be awesome watching his experience and just kind of seeing his overall process. Uh, let's see. <laughs> Sturkey's Backpacking Adventures. I'm with Syntax 77. Sweet and sour pork is my new favorite. Bring a little soy sauce pack and it's awesome. I've had it, but not with the soy sauce. I got to try that. Squid Hunter, do you guys test gear before doing overnight trips? Recently had a piece fail on my first trip out with it. Yes, I do. I tend to tr check in the backyard first, um, and it was really helpful to actually have a super cold snap. This time around, you can check. Um, you know, I was able to test some really good winter gear, especially while hiking. I was kind of testing my overall layering system just to make sure everything was fine. And so that was kind of a perfect time to do it. Uh, Trevor is talking about seeing Outdoor Adventures video and you had to get down there. Yep. Oh, the West Rim Trail probably. Trip, if you could, Trip is asking, if you could hike a trip anywhere in the world or solve world hunger, what shoes would you wear on your hike? <laughs> I hope I'd be selfless enough to solve world hunger. I'm sure most people would. Yeah, Gary, less than 30 days. That's crazy. Yeah, exactly. Get Gary to vlog. Gary vlogging the AT would be really fun to watch. Uh, let's see. So talking about the Laurel Highlands hiking trail. So our temperatures, we went from, I think, 271, correct me if I'm wrong, guys, to 653. That was our overall section. And temps that we had, lows of 22, a real feel of 18, and then 31 and 37. And so that was... That was, a, I think, a decent trip. It was definitely a good backpacking trip. We didn't have as much snow as we originally planned, but it was a lot of fun just getting out there um, and seeing kind of a lot of things I've seen in Jason's videos, um, as well as I thought it was good because we focused more on um, kind of getting to camp, camping, more that experience um, than just kind of pushing miles. I know those guys were kind of champing or chomping at the bit, making sure that they you know put out another 20-mile day or something like that. 
but I was quite pleased uh, and comfortable with the range that we kept in and make sure that we uh, we had a good time. We really did. Uh, let's see. Yep, everyone would watch Gary. I think he, I think we would. So just channel questions that I've had over the last couple uh, days. Of course, we'll start with the the Deuce Two. So and so the Deuce Two. I Gary asked this question in the last video. I'll get to your question in a second, Tom. Um, this question in the last video, but he was asking if the Deuce Two is worth the upgrade from the original Deuce. And I'd say if you have the original Deuce, don't upgrade. I, I think it's a it's an incremental enough upgrade that it's cool for people who are getting the Deuce Two for the first time. But I think you can you can put use a file and put those notches in um, the edge of your deuce if you have that. The big thing he was saying is that he wanted to make sure he had an upgrade um, with some you know the finger undulations or and the um, the cutting edge. But the big thing is making sure people are aware that you can turn it and reverse it. It's a big thing he was kind of checking out, and so make sure that you're able to do that. And it actually it really helps make things a lot easier. <laughs> yeah, exactly. We we got into the the talk already, the tr trial talk. You're welcome for the ambassador code. Thank you very much. Yeah, that's that's one of the ways to support the channel, but that way I don't get any financial compensation uh, through the ambassador program. It's mostly just like uh, swag and extra um, food, um, depending on on uh, how much, of course, that you guys buy. Hopefully you bought like a thousand uh, pouches or packets, right? <laughs> uh, Tom is asking this. Apologies if I missed this. Did you all meet previously before this trip or this was the first time meeting the others? This was actually the first time we met. Um, I met any of the three other guys. They had hiked together before. This is my first time meeting them. And so whenever I tell people that, it's always kind of odd because they're like, so you've only met these people online and you're going to go hike with them for four days. And the funny thing about YouTube, and you guys all know this, is it's really hard to hide um, your personality, who you are. I mean, I guess you could try, but it's one of those things where you guys pretty much know me, honestly. Um, this is exactly who I am. This is exactly who I am day to day in my regular life. Um, and what you see is kind of what you get. I just find it's easier that way. And so YouTube is one of those different social media where you truly get to know a person because there's only so much you can edit out of your videos. And it becomes pretty obvious if you're not being genuine. So yeah, this was my first time meeting those guys. And they're all great guys. I mean, we had such a good time on the trail. It was a lot of fun just chatting, uh, just hanging out, um, talking some YouTube stuff, of course. Um, but the big thing was just hiking together. And uh, our styles of hiking are probably slightly different especially when it's not winter, um, but we were able to do it for winter and it was, it worked out well. Uh, Rick is asking, well, Arcana is asking, did Meerkat and Frozen get stir crazy at camp? I thought that um, last night they probably did um, just because we got to camp so early. I mean, we crushed the miles. I think we did. It was only eight miles and we were in camp by one. So that's one of those things where they got a little stir crazy. Um, but we built an awesome fire and everything was fine. We just chatted for a while. I thought you were going to retire the poop trial. <laughs> I duct tape. Oh, that's a good idea. Silk Steps talking about that. That's a good hack for Mountain House is to duct tape like a, so a soy pouch for, to the outside of, oh, that way so you always have it. That's a that's a great idea. <laughs> uh, trial mod video. Now that would be interesting. Uh, any idea when we will see a video from you on the LHHG? Yep, the videos should be released. We're going to coordinate our release for the videos, so I'm, I'm hoping by next Thursday. Of course, this right now is eating into my editing time. Uh, I usually edit in the evening. I'll, I'll have time to finish it. So next Thursday is the hope. Um, so you probably won't see a video from me on Monday, but you'll see one on Thursday. Uh, let's see. I like trips with my friends, but like my solo trip just as much. Did anyone surprise you when you met them? This is from Crazy Kev. Oh, I don't know. Like, in, I maybe in terms of like physical appearance. I, and Frozen has mentioned this before, but he's he's a littler. I don't want to. I don't know how to phrase this. He's shorter than you would expect. So that the camera it makes it, you can't really tell how tall someone is, and so you guys can't really tell. And Josh is making fun of me, but I am actually six one, closer to six two. And so there were times when I feel like I was towering over all those other guys, where um, you know I had to kind of bend down to get in the frame of the camera, um, and they're all kind of standing normally. So other than that, um, I'm a bigger guy than all of them. So that's probably the most surprising thing is when I realize how how tall I am compared to everyone else. 
uh, Scott is saying, when you meet someone on YouTube, it's usually always the person you see on YouTube. Yeah, I, I'd say so. I think in general, I think it's hard to it's hard to be someone else. I guess you can, um, but but that's what it is. And Uptrail said the same thing about me when he met me for the first time. He's like, gosh, you are really, really tall. And it doesn't come out in video, uh, but I am. Uh, let's see. No bad experience meeting for someone on YouTube. I guess there's always a possibility. Have I ever taken a CPR first aid while for wilderness first aid course? I have not um, taken that. I've taken like um, medical courses before, like emergency type medicine, very brief, um, nothing certificate based. Um, but do I think it's a good idea? Yeah, I think it wouldn't hurt. I know uh, Devin from Backcountry Exposure, for example, has taken a wilderness first aid course um, out in Wyoming. What uh, the Knowles course, I believe, is what he took. And so. Um, that's something I would I would wouldn't say is a bad idea at all. Super Trooper Super Trooper Two Two is coming out. Uh, I think four twenty is when it is. Uh, Adventures Archives Pictured Rocks video will be out very soon. Yeah. Going back to channel channel comments that I've had, and some some of you guys have not seen this, um, but the if you've never seen uh, the Hammock Lufa video, I've gotten a, a little bit of traffic recently from that. Um, you guys should check it out. Just search on YouTube for hammock loofah. And that's probably one of my favorite hacks to share with people is how cheap and easy it is to kind of make, they're delicate, but they're kind of fragile snake skins for a tarp or even for a hammock. I guess you could use it for a hammock. And it's one of those things you check out if you haven't as yet. Um, someone also asked and said I should put um, my beginner gear recommendations in every video. And they are there. If you look in the description below, um, usually I'll have it under my backpacking recommendations and usually I have it on kind of an overall Amazon store. And so that's another way to support the channel. Of course, I get affiliate uh, marketing through them. Um, but it's one of those things where I put everything and I curate everything. So you go to one stop shop and you actually will see my commentary on gear that I've actually used. And so it's in there. And so if you guys want to check it out, feel free to do that. Uh, Stricky is talking about, was glad to hear you guys talking about concealed carry in your hikes. Lots do, but don't discuss. I don't have a problem mentioning it um, in that. Yeah, in general, I do uh, bring it with me. Um, I usually will check out in advance depending on the state, and I try not to fly with it. Um, but, um, you know, flying with it is a possibility. Uh, I just don't want to deal with that hassle right now. Um, but most neighboring states that I'll have reciprocity is something that I do. <laughs> Calvin's talking about he only had one bad experience meeting a YouTuber and it was Scott Taylor he kept me up all night playing the harmonica <laughs> and Josh is talking about the the loofah yeah the loofah for one dollar or less depending on how much you pay for a loofah you really can't uh, beat that so someone also asked about the war bonnet mini fly and if I still use it yep I definitely I also used it on this trip for me it's just enough tarp if you need a little bit more tarp um, for wind coverage or for extreme rain coverage, I'd say go to the Thunderfly, also by War Bonnet. Um, but the War Bonnet Mini Fly is kind of my year round tarp. Um, if I got more snow, I might think about bumping up to the Superfly or the UGQ uh, Winter Dream. I think always is another good kind of attractive option for me as well. Um, but yeah, I still use the War Bonnet Mini Fly. I used it this past trip. It's light, so even with all the tie outs and everything on it, um, all the Dutch hardware, I believe it is still a smidge under 16 ounces. So, uh, Arcana is asking, uh, are you worried you will ruin your mini skirt? I mean, rain kilt when you can't use it for a ground cloth. Human fiber ain't cheap. No, so far I haven't uh, had any issues with it in terms of durability. Um, there is one small hole in it after saying that now. That's my own fault. That's after I fell in the maroon bells. I was wearing my rain kilt <laughs> because it was raining and I slipped and fell um, kind of between switchbacks and the rain kilt got a hole in it. So I just put a bit of tenacious tape on it and it works fine. Uh, Josh is talking about making fun of me in my rain kilt. It's called a rain kilt guys. Okay. I don't, I don't understand what's so hard about this. Um, oop. So yeah, it's one of those things that it has worked really well. I, I can't complain about it. Um, my last video talking about the things I would get rid of or things I don't bring with me anymore, I thought was an interesting question. We had a couple interesting conversation threads. Um, and the, the big thing was 
the sunglasses. And so I, there was a big long conversation and, and I, I guess I thought about this when I was editing that sunglasses do protect your eyes from UV radiation, but I didn't know how much you needed it. Um, apparently, <laughs> just based on comments, you do need it more. Uh, it causes increased risk of cataracts. So I guess I'll bring it or maybe I'll try an amber um, tint to my, um, to my sunglasses, but it's something I'll, I'll keep in mind. And so I'm, I'm open to changing my mind, open to being educated on things like that. Um, because in general, honestly, I grew up on an island. It was sunny pretty much year round and I wore sunglasses, but a handful of times. Um, and so the same thing kind of out here, usually on snow fields, right? I just don't have an issue with it. Um, but it's something that if someone tells me something I have learned based on what someone says, I'll try in the future to, to do a little better. Maybe I'll start bringing my sunglasses after all. Uh, thanks, Calvin. Y'all look up to me, huh? <laughs> it's not a dress. It's a kilt. All right, guys. Uh, Trevor saying you watched your video on ditching gear today it was funny because two days ago I decided I'm not going to use my Tyvek sheet for my duplex. Can always use repair tape if something happens. Yep, you can. But a duplex, honestly, if it's an area that's rocky or with puncture stuff, that's expensive enough. I probably would use a uh, a, a Tyvek or actually Gary in his Soulplex used uh, a sheet of uh, Polypro, and that seemed to work pretty well for him. Uh, Arcana is talking about oh they're talking about kilts and skirts. Okay, Todd is asking this. This is a good question. Is there any gear that you have purchased that didn't live up to your expectations? I got to think about that one for a minute, Todd. Of course, my mind automatically goes to trowels right away, but I know that's not what your question is about. Gear that I've purchased. I think so far, the majority of gear I've purchased has come from um, cottage manufacturers. So in general, um, they do a pretty good job of making sure that, um, hey, good night, Calvin, that everything is kind of up to par and everything looks really good. Um, it seems like we have a little buffering here. I'm not sure what's going on, but we'll keep going. Um, right now, it looks like it's okay. In terms of something that didn't, um, I'm, I'm really struggling to find something. Josh is in the chat. What does he think is something that didn't live up to expectations? I, Okay, I'll, I'll go back. Maybe my Exos 58 is one of those things that just didn't seem um, like it was quite right when it fit, um, especially around the waist. When I think about the hip belt, like I think the Exos is a great pack and I'm reaching here, but I feel like the hip belt especially needs some work. And so it's one of those things where um, I guess I would choose that one, maybe the Exos 58. I love the 38, but the 58 had some issues with uh, hip belt fit for me. Uh, let's see. Talking about, okay, see us, Turkey. Yeah, I guess Josh, think about it and mention it. Oh, yes. Josh mentions, of course, his boots right away. Oh, that's a good one. I should have thought about that one, Josh. So he uh, has his Oboe's uh, mid-bridger boots. And for him, he felt like that didn't um, meet his expectations. I guess for me, it would be the Solomon Quest 42s. I expected that, honestly, to be my overall... Uh, boot to end all boots and I was going to wear that backpacking the entire time. Turns out I didn't. I transitioned to trail runners. So I guess that's one thing that the expectation um, kind of didn't match what reality was. Something else that I may have been... <laughs> yeah, it could have been my hips, Jeff. <laughs> but you know what? These hips don't lie. <laughs> um, someone else that's, that may have changed my mind is keeping that trash bag as well. Um, I talked about not having the trash bag anymore on any of my trips. Um, but someone, old timer Lee in the comments, if you go back to that video, which did really well, it surprised me, uh, for my channel at least, um, talked about using those uh, trash bags to pick up other people's trash, which is true. It's one of those things where I guess I didn't think about that. And I'm hoping maybe to do a hike here in, in Hocking Hills where that's the overall purpose. We'll meet up, maybe just do an overnight. And then honestly, we'll walk the trails because they're beautiful, but have a trash bag with us. I think that'd be something really cool to do because it's unfortunate, but you see, you tend to see a lot of um, trash in the trails, especially I hate toilet paper on the trails. It's the worst, but just people with their plastic bottles or their um, just junk everywhere. And I don't understand it. I don't get it. But yeah, trash bags can 
can uh, serve a lot of purposes. I haven't brought a big one for a while, and Scott's saying he uses it for water crossings. <laughs> um, but it's one of those things where I, I think I would um, would maybe bring it for certain hikes now. Another one of the things that people talked about ditching in terms of gear was trekking poles, which really surprised me. Crazy Cav, no, you can't sleep off trail in Hocking Hills. You have to go to a campground. So usually I use uh, Top of the Caves campground um, or there's a canoe livery in Rock Bridge um, where you can stay. Uh, yeah, Jeff, I know you love your Solomon Trail Runners. Yeah, it's, it's amazing just how awesome those trail runners are. Someone talked about actually ditching trekking poles, which surprised me um, in my last video. And for me, I, I will never do that. Um, they talked a little bit about how uh, they just felt like they didn't overall need it. But for me, I like to be able to use my upper body to go uphill. And downhill, it really saves my knees a ton. Um, water crossings is another way I use them. Porch mode in my hammock for my tarp. Rocky areas are invaluable. Actually, while we're on the trail in Laurel Highlands, we talked quite a bit about how, how awesome trekking poles are and how often we use them. And so for me, that's something I would never get rid of or ditch. And I know there are a couple people who don't use trekking poles anymore or have transitioned away from them, but it's one of those things where I, I don't think I could see myself ever doing that. Um, some other ditching gear comments that were made was talking about um, headlamp, and so not carrying a headlamp anymore and transitioning uh, more to kind of those flashlights or those clip lights. I know Darwin, for example, has used it in the past. It's one of those things where I like my headlamp. I still use the Petzl Actic. And I know Jason from Outdoor Adventures uses the Petzl Actic Core. And Gary actually uses that um, pencil headlamp that clips to his hat. And I know it, la it lasts only about um, six hours or so. That's one of those things that he does um, use. And final bit of conversation it's getting here. It's about 9.30 now. We've been going for about 30 minutes. But final bit of conversation, uh, depending on how many questions you have in the chat, of course, is backpacking with kids. And that's one of those comments that kind of came up recently. And I was kind of surprised by it. But it, it's funny. My wife and I were just recently talking about this because we're hoping for um, maybe doing a family Smokies trip. I'm not sure how that's going to turn out, but it's going to be in the summer. Um, now, to keep in mind that my kids are kind of brand new to backpacking. Um, they've hiked with me before, local parks, uh, local areas nearby. They've done pretty well. Um, but, you know, in terms of age, they're all between kind of five and ten. Uh, I have three of them. And so one of my hopes is to transition, and you'll start to see this transition, and you'll start to see maybe a series in the summer where I talk about backpacking with kids and kind of what I've done, how I've changed uh, my overall kit or how I'll have to change. The hope is that I'll have to continue to keep the arc hull because it's big enough, hopefully, to, to have some room for additional gear because I'll be carrying a lot of it. Uh, my wife probably will be carrying some as well. Um, and each kid will probably have their own little backpack where maybe they have some snacks, some water, um, maybe their quilt. I, they each have their own Costco quilt now. And so, I've, of course, I've tested that for them um, down to like 45 uh, when we were at Hawking Hills um, one of those nights. And so it did really well and they were warm. So that's, uh, that's good to know that. And so my hope is to eventually, I know it sounds awful, but I'm going to have to go um, to a tent for chips like that. Just it becomes easier rather than having like three mini hammocks for kids and they can sleep pretty much anywhere. But I'm starting to collect little pieces of gear like uh, foam pads because they don't really care where they sleep in terms of they don't they're not achy when they get up. So if I if I sleep on a foam pad, I'm gonna be done <laughs> with hiking. Like I'm not gonna hike anymore on um, the next day because my um, side is gonna hurt. I'm gonna be all out of joint, and it's not gonna be a good thing. But for them, um, they can pretty much lay on a foam pad just to insulate themselves, and they'll be fine. So that'll be interesting to uh, to see. Uh, let's see, going back to the chat, but yeah, that's one of those things I want to do is I want to make sure I get out there uh, with the kids and this is the, I'm going to have to do it. And they ask me, it's so funny. My kids ask me literally every time, every time I go out. So even this trip, they, they all ask me, can we come with you? Can we come with you? And so they're getting to the age now where they can come with me and I shouldn't be saying no anymore. They should start coming on, uh, trips more often. And honestly, if they start coming with me on trips, that means that I get to go out on more trips <laughs> because there's some trips they can't come on. 
But if I get to have them come with me, I know my wife will come with me or I can get to go out. And so I'm hoping to raise like three hiking buddies and so I can always go out with them. Uh, let's see. Let's go back to the chat. Gary's talking about flashlights. Um, so he, the night core tip works really well as light. So I think that's the one he's using. And actually it, it did work well. I mean, for his needs, you're not talking about any extended night hiking. It did fine. Squid Hunter is saying tracking poles is seeing people carry them but not actually use them, just kind of dragging them along, which surprises me. I always use my tracking poles. Even on flat ground, maybe I might lift them up for a couple seconds. That's kind of it. Hey, Black Mountainside. Todd, any thoughts on through hikes with dogs? Well, Todd, I am not a through hiker, um, but with dogs, in terms of hiking with dogs, that's something I would consider. And actually, I've been looking for uh, a furry, I guess, hiking buddy that way. And so we're kind of looking at dogs right now. We've been doing it for a little while, hoping to get a dog at least this summer. How does that work with dog food? Depending on the size of your dog, um, I'd say, looks like we have some buffering going on. Um, in terms of the size of the dog, having a dog backpack, if you um, have to um, think about hiking with a dog, I would look at Franky. Uh, I think it's Franky's Adventures. His channel does a really nice job of, he, I think he had a, a, looks like we have a lot of buffering now. I'm not sure why. But it's one of those things where, yep, it looks like, I'm not sure what exactly is going on. Sorry for the delay, guys, if you have it. But yeah, I've been looking for uh, a dog to kind of go hiking with, and it'd be kind of fun. So Tom is asking about hammock recommendations. I think I'm ready to hammock. Can you give two or three recommendations? I love Dream Hammock. So my if you're thinking about a hammock in general, I would say the Dream Hammock Daring is really good if you're looking for overall comfort. Sorry, guys. It looks like we're buffering pretty big time here. I'm not sure what's up. Um, let's go back to talking about the hammock. But the Dream Hammock Daring is one of my recommendations. I'd also try the Dutch Work Chameleon. And I would also consider the uh, Dream Hammock Raven if you're thinking about overall comfort. So that's a little heavier than the Darien, um, but I, I like the idea of, um, of the Raven being able to have that reverse kind of lay. Uh, Silk Step, I'm taking my four year old twin grandnieces hiking and canoeing. Nice. Yeah, actually, that's one of the. It's funny you guys are mentioning um, kids and pooping in the woods. That's one of the things that my. Um, kids are like, wait, so we have to go to the bathroom in the woods. And I said, I'll, I'll teach you how to do it because honestly, believe it or not, it, especially for kids, it's, it's not a skill that they know or, um, have practiced hopefully, <laughs> or well, actually, no, I don't, I don't say hopefully, um, but they've never done it. And so it's one of those things where they're kind of excited to learn. So that should be funny to see. Yeah. They'll get their own trowels. That's true. I know Adam. A tent living like an animal <laughs> let's see I like having my trekking poles there are trails you're better off without them tent yeah tent is i think a good way to go for kids i just can't really avoid it in terms of weight hike with a boy scout is challenging but fun memories dream hammock yep lots of dream hammocks because you can customize it to everything and so i know i think i've about convinced jason that we're he's going to go with a dream hammock daring i believe maybe he can get a custom one Trevor is asking, after sleeping in the shelter, have you decided to join us ground dwellers? No, I don't think so. Not quite yet. I'm still more comfortable in the hammock, but with the X-Therm, it was so nice to have that option to go to the ground if I wanted to. And so that's what I did. A uh, good short loop in the Smokies for young kids is 20 mile ranger station up to Gregory Bald. It's funny that you mentioned that one. Um, that's the hope is actually not, um, not from 20 mile ranger station. It will probably be a little bit more difficult for our kids, but we're going to try from... Uh, I think it was campsite 12. I don't know, but it's at the base. Uh, it's going up uh, Gregory Ridge trail to Gregory bald is the hope. But I'll check out 20 mile ranger station because um, that would be, you know, very similar hike with a similar destination. So that'd be fine. On the out Royale, everyone's going to bed. Yep. Look into the Raven. I think in terms of comfort, I think you'll like that. Part-time hiker. If you had to pick one, place to hike where would it be and why one place to hike i think i would try going to it looks like we're buffering again so this is gonna be the last question guys i'm not sure what's up with youtube tonight um, but one place to hike would probably be st lucia i would go ahead and try that out just because um, i like the idea of 
I don't know what's up with YouTube tonight. Last question, guys. Um, with St. Lucia, just because I'm from the Caribbean, but I've never been to St. Lucia, I know it's kind of uh, one of those volcanic islands, and there's a it's pretty mountainous, but kind of fun. So either St. Lucia or Dominica, because I've never been there before, but I'm from the Caribbean, and it'd be kind of fun to see. So guys, it looks like for some reason, YouTube is acting all kind of funky today, but I will go ahead and close it out here. Thanks so much for watching. Um, it's always fun kind of getting together and seeing exactly um, what we're going to talk about today or tonight. See questions in the chat. And thanks for showing up every other week. And so we won't be here next Wednesday, but we'll be back, of course, the following Wednesday. Be fun talking about channel questions and kind of picking a theme for the evening. So thanks for watching, guys. And Hike with Mike, you just came at the tail end. You got to watch some of the, the replay. And if you're watching the replay, thanks for watching. It's a lot of fun to do these chats. And so, peace.